Nickel allergies. Are you allergic to nickel? What jewelry should you wear? What should you avoid? Coming up right now on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 18. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you at the level of an expert, somebody who has had experience with dealing with people with mental allergies, piercing them, helping them through the process of choosing jewelry, and selecting the, own, the jewelry that I do stock myself to help eliminate possibilities of reactions. So, I'm going to try to give you some good information that you might find helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two parts. The first part is going to be those that have already gone to a doctor, like a dermatologist, had a patch test, and have a very clear understanding that they have issues with nickel. And we're going to go through some of the things that you should avoid and some of the, your options as far as jewelry. The second part, we're going to talk about whether or not you really are allergic to nickel or if it's something else um, that may be causing you issues. So, you've already gone, you got your pet, you got your test, you've seen a dermatologist, you have issues wearing all kinds of uh, clothing, you've had issues with wearing belt buckles and all, and watches and all this other stuff, so you know in fact you have an issue with nickel. So what are your choices when you're going to get a piercing? And I'm going to kind of list it from what I think is the best option to the, the okay option. The first one would be niobium. Niobium has kind of gone out of favor, not really out of favor, but it's gone out of, uh, well, it got really expensive for a while. So it kind of stopped. It wasn't, it's not as predominant as it was in the body piercing industry, uh, let's say 20 years ago. Uh, niobium is a pure element. Um, it is not an alloy, other, unlike the other things I'm going to be talking about. It is a material that is ore melted and turned into jewelry. It, you can get the various different colors. That's one of the advantages of it. Just like titanium through oxidation and applying different electrical currents, you can get very bright colors, um, color combinations, all kinds of uh, wild and crazy stuff. The thing is, is unless you are specifically allergic to niobium, which is extreme rare, you are not going to have an issue with it because unlike other materials that are used for body piercing jewelry and ear posts and etc., it is not made, there is no other materials in there. It's not an alloy. So you should be perfectly fine. The second would be titanium. Now titanium is an alloy. Regardless, I know it's on the periodical chart, but the reality is, is what we determine as titanium and what we use in day-to-day -day life, whether it be in your car or your motorcycle or, you know, that ring on your finger or that ring in your ear, is an alloy. And there are different grades of that. With titanium, you need to have in-plant grade titanium. And it's known by a couple of different uh, things you can look for. Um, as far as knowing whether or not it is of that purity and it is the correct alloy for body placement. The first one would be TI space <laughs> 6AL-4V also known as grade 23 or G23. Um, there's also you can look at the ATSM numbers which is usually F1-136. That's going to determine that titanium is of a level and absolutely safe. If it isn't that, eh, you might probably going to have some issues. Now you know. When I'm talking about titanium, I am not talking about titanium plating. And I'll get more into plating a little bit later and some other things that you need to avoid. I'm talking about pure titanium alloy jewelry. Not plated, not filled, 100%. Number three in my list of uh, possible options for you, go high carat weight gold. Now, gold does, depending on the manufacturer, 
contains a little bit of nickel, especially on lower K, uh, carat materials, and especially with uh, anything that's other than yellow gold. If, it, if it's white gold or in that direction, chances are is they may have added nickel to it to give it more of that silver-like look, or it had, they added silver, which had nickel attached to it, that may have given it a more silver look. So I would suggest if you do have a nickel allergy and you have to go with gold and you can afford it because it's not cheap, at least 14 to 18 karat gold, solid, not plated, not filled, and um, it should be nickel free or marked that it's nickel free. Um, in some cases, uh, they'll even go as far as uh, uh, doing electric, like a, a platinum or type of material that makes even the finish stronger and more innate for more durability. Um, all of those things are fine and great and wonderful, but you basically want to make sure that it's yellow gold, solid, 14 karat or better. It's pretty rare. It is possible because I have seen it, but usually when you get over 14 karat, you rarely see nickel in it. Um, the last would be glass. Now, glass, Pilex, it has its own issues, including dur durability and the possibility of breaking. It's not really the best option to initially pierce with, but it's glass. It doesn't contain any metal in it. You should be fine wearing it. Number, I guess this is five, right? Would be implant grade surgical stainless steel, also known as ASTM or ATSM. Um, F138, and I don't know why every time I say that I want to go, we are 138, we are 138, we are 138, anyway, um, there are on the market, especially in Europe, nickel free versions of the alloy, uh, the problem I have with it is usually it's you're kind of going on the word of whoever manufactured it or whether or not it's completely nickel free. I have had a lot of clients that have claimed that they have nickel allergies, that we've pierced them with uh, implant grade steel and they had absolutely no problem at all. And this brings us on to other things to look for other than material. Number one, the finish. If it is a high glossy finish, mirror-like, where you can see your reflection and almost uh, you know, make out the beauty of your eyes, it is going to be less likely to give you reactions because that finish is like a protective barrier between what that alloy is made out of and your skin. The second thing is you wanna avoid anything that's shaped that isn't made of nickel-free gold. And when I'm talking about shaped objects, I'm talking about elaborate gym settings. I'm talking about uh, your favorite sports team logo, uh, dangly crap, uh, chains that come off of things. Uh, also, um, uh, the Playboy bunnies and dolphins and etc. The problem with those are, even though the packaging may state something like surgical stainless steel or titanium, they're usually only talking about the post section the shaped objects, which are not easy to produce in those materials, though there are some manufacturers out there that can do it, are usually made, in most cases, of really substandard materials that are gonna contain nickel. They're also gonna tarnish, there are things like silver, pewter, uh, copper, pop metal, etc. The other problem with them is, is a lot of them contain a small amount of lead, which up against your skin for a long period of time could cause issues. Um, and, you know, copper will turn your skin green. Uh, so avoid things like that. Also, never trust anything that's plated. Um, regardless of where you're purchasing it from, any reputable place that sells body piercing jewelry is going to sell solid materials. They don't sell plated. The problem with plated is they can use any fancy word they want to or fancy method to do it. It will eventually wear off. 
Um, also, with my experience with people that tend to have more sensitivity to metal, they seem to have a higher pH balance and their body team seems to be more apt to break down that plating than a normal person. So, no plating. With gold, no plating. Because, and the other thing is, is that you might be think like you're doing the right thing because you're getting titanium jewelry, but it's titanium jewelry over low grade, non-implant grade surgical stainless steel that has no polish on it. So your body rips off and peels away and chips away and the durability, you know, just scratches and everything else until it's down to bare stainless steel and you start having reactions in a piercing that you've had for years. Well, not years, maybe a couple months. So, no plated, no filled, no electro coating, none of that stuff. Pure, should be solved. So let's get into the second part. You have had a situation in your life where you feel like you may be allergic to nickel, but you're unsure. Usually this happens in a couple of different ways. Either you buy some cheap material, some cheap belt, <laughs> or cheap watch, or cheap ring, or some cheap jewelry, and you suddenly have a reaction to it. Um, the other way is, is you get, most commonly, is you get your ears pierced with low grade jewelry and you go out and a couple days later it's suddenly flared up and it looks gross. So you went back there to the place where you had it done um, and the person behind the counter who had been doing it for three months said to you, well, my aunt had the same problem and yeah she's allergic to nickel so maybe you're allergic to nickel we should change the jewelry out to something from our hyperallergenic line couple problems there first off hyperallergenic is a marketing term it means nothing absolutely nothing there's no standard to measure of determining whether or not it is more body friendly or biocompatible in any way, shape or form. It is nonsense. Generally what it is, is it's probably a copper post with chrome plate, with a, a stainless steel or some type of material then plated on top of it. Uh, here's the, also you may have gone to a doctor and the doctor said to you after taking a look is, well, it's either an infection or you're having a reaction to the metals. So you may be allergic to nickel or you have an infection. And usually they'll treat it as, hey, it's best if you remove the jewelry or replace it with something that doesn't contain nickel. And here's some antibiotics in case it is in fact infected. Neither of those things determine that you're allergic to nickel. I... Uh, Things that determine that you're allergic to nickel is if you've had issues with, uh, if you had your blood drawn and you've had a breakout or some issue after that. Um, if you've had problems wearing watches, uh, silver jewelry, necklaces, anything around your neck, those old school ball chain ones that the punk rockers wore, if you had problems with those, um, if you have problems wearing belt buckles, if you've had problems or had reactions to your cell phone, if you had reactions to eating food that was cooked in stainless steel cookware, if you've had reactions to um, glasses, metal glasses or frames that are made out of metal, I should say. Um, all of those things can determine that you may have a sensitivity to either nickel or one of the materials in, the, in, that, in that jewelry. The most common or the thing that we all seem to have in common is genes. The zippers and the back of the rivets on the front, you know, that, that top button, if you've had a reaction to that. So let's look at kind of the difference between an infection and other problem in an actual allergic reaction. Allergic reactions will usually happen within a matter of hours of contact, um, usually within the first 24, 24 hours after the piercing's been done. And usually what will happen is you'll see... Uh, eczema, you'll see uh, blisters with watery substance inside them, it'll get itchy, a rash, discolorization, all that stuff will happen almost immediately. Because, and, and what is happening, and the reason why it's sometimes it's hard for a doctor to determine the difference between an infection and allergic reaction, is what's happening is your body's immune system is reacting. So, what happens is this, your body, immune system, 
uh, on, a, on a normal person who does, well, you're normal even if you have, someone who doesn't have a, a mental uh, sensitivity. When that nickel comes in contact with their skin, your body goes, eh, it's nickel, it's safe, no problem, we'll hang out, we'll be buds, I'll, I'll put up with it. When someone who's sensitive to metal or has a metal allergy comes in contact with nickel, your immune system says, harmful, danger, danger, Will Robinson, danger, and starts to react to it. And it will react in sometimes much like it would if you were having an infection. Um, the problem is, or the biggest tail on it, is usually the allergic reaction happens much quicker than you're going to start seeing signs of an infection or other problem. Now, it's not uncommon right after a piercing is done to see redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness to touch, inflammation, swelling, and even with some people, depending on the piercing, maybe a little bit of itchiness uh, when, as the histamines kind of kick in. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're having an allergic reaction. I often say when people call me up and they say I'm having an allergic reaction to the jewelry, I, and the first thing that comes to mind is if you're having one, you will damn well know it. Go see your piercer because they're going to know the difference between an infection or an allergic reaction. They, um, if they don't, then they need to see it so that they know the difference. Um, like I said, usually infection, a little bit longer along. I have had some clients that for one reason or another, either they had that high pH balance or the jewelry got scratched or what have you, that they suddenly had reactions far into the healing process and we changed the jewelry out. Uh, that's rare, extremely rare. If you're using quality jewelry to pierce it initially and it has a high polish on it, there is no chance, there's a very, very slim chance that you're going to have an allergic reaction to it, especially if it is niobium or uh, titanium or even uh, or gold or even uh, implant grade surgical stainless steel. If the quality's there, you're not going to have an issue. Some other things that you can be having reactions to during the healing process could be the actual aftercare product that they've uh, assigned to you. Some of the uh, spray, spray uh, saline solutions, etc., have food preservatives added to them, which, if you're allergic to dairy and some food products, you're going to have a reaction to it, including I've had one client that uh, she went somewhere else, got her lip pierced, used a particular brand that's the healing power of the ocean, was unaware that there were egg whites in there. Yes, the chemical name is written on the back. Look it up if you don't believe me. Um, and her side of her face swelled up to two times its normal size. She looked kind of like a female Popeye. Um, as soon as she removed the jewelry and stopped uh, the uh, stopped using the spray, it all went away. Um, she thought she was allergic to titanium until I started to talk to her about, well, are you allergic to eggs? Are you allergic to you know food preservatives? Are you have problems eating this or that? And she told me, you know, I'm allergic to dairy. I'm, I'm lactose intolerant. I'm the, and there was the problem. So that can be one issue. The other issue that may be causing problems initially is just plain old fashioned crappy improper jewelry. Your body has an issue with you putting junk into it. That's it. If you're using jewelry that you're buying at various different places located in shopping malls or online, and it's especially the post style ear piercing stuff. That stuff is just not, there's no standard of measure. You have absolutely no idea 90% of the time what it's actually in fact made out of. Um, you don't know who's handled that jewelry, what was on that jewelry before you put it in there. There are a whole load of problems. Also, there kind of tend to be this one size fits all situation where it may be too small, it may be too long. This is where going to see a piercer and having the expertise on getting the proper fit can be very handy. Also, their knowledge on metals, alloys, and reactions that people have to them. See, so your piercer is what I'm saying. You don't, it, yeah, you might save, uh, you might be able to get two Labre studs for the price of what one ball at your uh, local piercing stop, shop costs. But the chances are is regardless of what it says on the description or on the package, it's not even made of that material. It's made of a slower grade, like I was talking about earlier. Alloys, 
there are different grades of alloys. So just because it says 316L or something similar, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's implant grade surgical stainless steel. It isn't of the purity or the level of a purity that is the standard. It's substandard. It's cheap. That's the reason why it costs. You can, oh, I got five of them for 20 bucks. That's why. Okay, I'm going to stop ranting about bad jewelry, but bad jewelry is probably one of the number one causes of reactions after a piercing is done or even after a piercing is healed that people attribute to metal allergies. So keep that in mind. The other thing you want to be concerned about is whether or not the jewelry was cleaned properly after it was manufactured. Sometimes people will have reactions to the compounds they use to buff it. If the piercer or the manufacturer didn't properly clean those off after the fact, that could cause a reaction with certain people. Well, I think I've, I've spoke my, my part. I spoke it. I've said what I needed to say to you. I think I've given you at least a good knowledge or a good understanding of what may possibly be going on. If you have any kind of questions or you want to talk about some things extensively, or maybe you have some new knowledge, maybe you can add something to the conversation, please leave a, a comment. Happy to answer. Happy to join in on the discussion. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you'd like to see more of these in the future, hit the notification bell. Until next time, happy piercing. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future.